Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna talk about the racing game template a little bit. So, as a lot of you know, this is an asset that I've been building for the Unity Asset Store. But what I've decided to do is I've also decided to make a game using the racing game template, um, in a sense, as an example. And two, uh, I, I really wanna be able to test this asset and, and experience what everybody else is experiencing and see what can in, be improved, really. Um, so uh, some of the things that I'm working on right now is UNet functionality, uh, which isn't really a public service yet from Unity, but uh, the multiplayer system uh, sh should be public soon. They didn't really give a date, but um, I have a little bit of a setup here, and I'm still going to be working on testing this. Um, and that's part of why I'm building a game using this is because I do need to test UNet, so I do need to distribute this game to different people and really just be able to test it because I'm at the point where I can only do so much testing on my own. Like I could te test for connectivity, make sure people can find games, and so on and so forth. Um, but when it comes to actually play testing the game, I can only drive one car at once. So. Uh, to me, building a game with this asset is a good way for me to do multiple things at the same time. Um, so what I've done is I've started to decorate the garage scene with assets from the Unity Asset Store. So let's just go ahead and turn a lot of this stuff off. And I've also put on a bunch of image effects, so I'm going to show everyone what I've done. So first I'm going to turn off all of these image effects and I'm going to bring the scene closer to the way it looks when uh, the template is first downloaded. Um, so yeah, basically what you have is you have your UI and then you have your cars. So I've replaced the cars with cars from T-Bowl and I've covered that in a previous video. What I want to do is I want to expose more paint options so this is going to be something that I'm going to improve um, I want to be able to access all of the properties of the standard shader or the standard specular whichever one I decide on and I want to extend those to the UI for the user so they can they can customize the way the car looks the exact same way that uh, a developer can so that's something that's important to me um, so I want to improve uh, the body customization options as well as the neon customization options. I think that as you go into higher values, um, the, the effect that I'm using for the glow light is a little too strong, um, but at lower values it's, it's more appropriate. Um, so I may just clamp that. Um, and just not let it go that high is something that I'm thinking I'm going to play with this a little bit more as time goes on. Also, uh, for upgrades for right now, I'm I'm going to see what I do with that. I do want to add a lot of different vehicle upgrades. And then I want to also create an option so that the player can change the wheels and they can uh, change the color of the glass so they can change the tinting if they wanted to. Um, so those are some of the vehicle options that I'm going to be working on adding to the template as well as the game that I'm building. Um, so that'll be an improvement that comes uh, sometime in the near future. And then what I did after I changed all the cars is I just started adding the assets from the asset store. So I replaced the turntable. Uh, initially it was just this one like some asphalt and then uh, we have the garage scene which I didn't really change too much um, this is just a garage asset from the unity asset store I did set up some reflections I can played with the reflection probe that's in the scene a little bit um, so all of this is pretty real-time like you're reflecting what's behind you or whatever so that's kind of cool. And then I added a little skybox so you could see some buildings outside. 
really bring the scene to life. And then after that I just started adding all of these image effects and I played with them a little bit. I'll admit that they can still use some tweaking. Um, I haven't really spent a whole lot of time with image effects, but this is uh, pretty much the end result after about two days worth of replacing assets and one day just downloading a bunch of stuff to bring into the pro project and figure out what I'm going to use. So now I, I feel like I have my garage scene at a point where it's um, it looks good and it's ready to improve. So like I said, I want to improve vehicle options and then obviously I'm going to, after this is done, work on the gameplay. So um, I have some options that I'll add. I'll work on creating a sleeker UI maybe and then some of that stuff will also be any of the improvements, actual programming improvements that I make for this game, they're all going to be pushed over to the racing game template. Um, obviously I can't include the 3D assets that we're looking at right now, but this is, uh, hopefully this is a good example to inspire somebody that might be having a hard time trying to figure out exactly what to do if you're just getting started. Um, I haven't done anything with the races yet. I probably will have, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. Um, but I do want to improve the system as well. And then we have the open world. Uh, I did play with the car controller a little bit, and actually I only started configuring the car prefab number one, so this vehicle I can't test yet. The only one that I'm testing is this one, so I'll go into free roam. And once I get all of the settings right for the car controller for this one, um, that'll be what all of the other vehicles are based on. So you, as you can see, it, there's a little bit of drifting going on. Um, I do want to add some kind of drift score tracker thing. Um, I want to improve the camera controller for the car. Uh, hopefully add a drift cam and some oversteering cams. Um, additionally, I also want to add controller support and Hopefully steering wheel support, I will have to go and, and pick up a steering wheel. Um, but I think that uh, adding all of that stuff is important. So I want to be able to use that for my game, and I think that other people would like to be able to use that for theirs as well. So right now this is the process that I'm going through to, to kind of test the current state of the racing template and see what needs to be improved and really uh, what needs to be worked on next. Uh, but yeah, so this is the template so far. I haven't put a whole lot of work into the car controller. I think I just, uh, what did I do here? I changed some of the the wheel values a little bit so it's easier to set up drifting. Um, so for example, I think it was the extremum slip if I pronounce that correctly. Uh, that allows you to get a lot of drift. Um, let's see now, it's doing it a little bit more. But then it's also hard to, to pull back from that, so what I might do is I might uh, actually really improve this car controller and add um, and have some of this stuff be changed dynamically based on certain settings. So. Uh, yeah, I'll, I don't want to go too much into that right now because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this. But I've changed the, the rear wheels to 0 0.4 and that's allowing me to get a little bit of a drift without uh, making the car uncontrollable or oversteering too much. But yeah, so this is uh, my first, I guess, uh, dev log for my racing game that I'm building using the racing game asset and there will be more as I start to add more features to this uh, game and as I start to improve the template I'll, I'll definitely make some announcements and um, if you're curious about the template 
what I'm doing right now, I do have a lot of, let's go ahead and I'm going to actually launch an exe so we can see the multiplayer stuff really quick. So here, this guy is just going to create a, a game. And then based on what game type you have, uh, you have a different map selection. And then you could also select the room size. So what I want to do with multiplayer is I want to... I, I really want to make it so that uh, the developers can create their own options to configure games, but I also want to do some some pre-configured settings. So uh, if the player doesn't want to do this to host a game, uh, they can also just click a button and these settings would be applied automatically. And then that would just take them straight into the create game scene. And this is essentially the, the start of the lobby for the player that's hosting the game. So he has a start button. Uh, what I'll probably do is only enable the start button when the room is full. Um, I guess it all depends on what type of game. So I really want to develop lots of different types of game types. So we, we did start a game on this executable. And what I'm the last thing I'm going to demonstrate is just looking up the games. So if we go and the find games menu this is going to query the matchmaking server and it's going to check to see which games are available to join and here you can see that uh, we have steve game it's a race and it's circuit hills so all of this and one of four players is here all of this information is um, available to the people that are querying and then if we go ahead and join uh, we still have access to the type of game that we're joining and then it will show us the room count when it updates. I'll probably go ahead and add some loading scenes so we don't see the UI until it's 100% ready. Um, yeah, then if uh, this player were to leave this room, we'll see that over here it'll be updated. Um, as well as, actually, let me just stop playing there. Because I, I did not handle that UI transition properly. But if I go to find game, you can see that it's updated here again. Back to one player, and it's updated here again. It'll take a second to update here. Um, this refreshes automatically, but it's uh, a little bit slower. But anyway, this is the, um, this is the current status of the multiplayer framework that I'm building using UNET. There we go, it's all updated. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So if anybody has any questions or if you want to leave some feedback, just let me know. And I'll see you guys in one of the next updates.